In this example, we will be looking at real data from the number of boat registrations in Florida and the number of manatees killed by boats in the corresponding years. So we are going to use a regression line, also known as a line of best fit, to create a model for this relationship between the boat registrations in Florida and the manatees killed by boats in Florida. The regression line allows us to identify the strength of relationships. Uh, we can tell whether the slope or association is positive or negative, and then we can determine how strong the correlation or relationship is. Uh, we think of the regression line as a predictor to help us make predictions for future changes that could happen if there are more boats or less boats. And we use these models to try to make extrapolations or predictions for the future. So here we have a table of data corresponding with years from 1977 to 2009 with the number of boat registrations in thousands. So in 1977, when we see the 447 under boats, that's actually 447,000 boats. And then the number of manatees that were killed by boats that year in Florida. So in 1977, there were 447,000 boats registered in Florida and 13 manatee deaths. Boats are registered in the same way that cars are registered in states. So every boat owner who uses their boat regularly would have their boat registered. So overall, if we look at the trend, it looks like since 1977 through 2009, the overall trend is that boat registrations have increased. We certainly see some years where the values dip down from previous years, but the overall trend is an increase since 1977. And then looking at the manatee deaths, we also see an overall trend showing an increase in manatee deaths as well. So we are investigating if there's a correlation between the number of boats and the number of manatee deaths. So which column will be the explanatory variable and why? So we believe that these boats are contributing to the manatee deaths. Um, dead manatees probably aren't uh, contributing to people registering more boats. So the relationship seems to be that the boats are contributing to the manatee deaths because the manatees are getting hit by the boats. So the number of boats in thousands is the explanatory variable. That'll be on our x-axis when we plot our scatter plot. Which column will be the response variable? Why? So we believe the changing numbers of boats result in more manatee deaths. So the response variable is going to be the number of manatee deaths. We also have the years here. We can think of the years as a tracking data point, um, but we don't need to use the years in our um, equation because we aren't thinking that the year depends on the manatee deaths. We think the number of boats is what influences the manatee deaths. All right, so we're going to head into StatCrunch and do a simple linear regression and record the regression equation and the correlation value here. So over in StatCrunch in the data file Math 110 Manatee Deaths in Florida, I've entered the data for the boats and the manatees. And so we are going to calculate the regression. We are going to go to Stat, Regression, and then in our class we're mostly going to use linear regression, so we'll choose simple linear. You can see it's possible to do polynomial curves and multiple linear regressions and logistic curves. So if you take a future class in statistics, you'll explore many more regression models. But in our class, we're primarily focused on linear regression. And then my x variable or my explanatory variable is going to be the boats count. And then my y variable or response variable is going to be the manatees count. The other columns are from a different question, so I added some more data to this file. And then I'm not going to go ahead and do a hypothesis test, but know that you could using this data to try to uh, figure out if the intercept and slope are certain values. And then I want to make sure my graph is going to give me a fitted line plot. And we will head down and click Compute. So the first screen gives me a lot of information. Uh, we aren't going to use parameter estimates or analysis of variance estimates in this part of the class. We are interested in the top values here. So the dependent variable is also known as a y variable because the y output depends on what we selected for the x input. And so that's the manatees. The independent variable or the x variable is the boats or the number of boats. And then our equation is here. Now StatCrunch in this first screen gives us the equation in terms of words. 
So the manatees are the output or the dependent variable or the y variable. And so that is saying our output or our manatees equals, and then we've got negative 36.27958 plus uh, 0.11769028 multiplied by the boats. So we're, we're used to seeing x and y, StatCrunch is giving us words here, and that's an okay way to write down the equation. The sample size is 33, and so that's the number of rows that we had data for. And our correlation, what we're interested in, is very strong, it's 0.94. And then the next row gives us the R-square value. So you find the R-square value by taking the correlation and multiplying it by itself, so that's also very strong. The R-square value tells us um, how much of the variation we can explain due to our linear equation. We aren't going to be using that much in this class, but no, when you look at models or research studies, very often the R-square value is reported as well. And if you ever get the R-square value and not the correlation, you can just take the square root of the R-square value to work backwards. I like the second screen uh, because I can see my line of estimate going to my data points. And when I hover my mouse over the line here, I get my line of best fit given in terms of X and Y, which might be a little more familiar from algebra class. Uh, the values are the same as we saw in the version of the equation with the variables written out. Uh, if you head back to the screen, we see this equation right here is the same values. They just gave us the words manatees instead of saying Y, and then the word boats instead of saying the X value. So same equation. Um, I'm going to record the equation rounded to four decimal places. That's my usual habit. So let's head back to my page. All right, so I've recorded down here in part C the equation, and it actually looks like I wrote the initial value or the starting value out to five decimal places, so you could round it to four places. And then we are adding the slope here times x, where x is representing the number of boats. And our correlation is 0.9403. So we want to interpret the meaning of the slope. So the slope as a value is 0 0.1177, but what does that mean? So the slope is a rate. In this case, the slope is the rate of manatee deaths per 1,000 boats, and that rate is 0.1177. So this is an overall rate of change. So you could think about it as um, the thousands of boats go up every additional 1,000 boats, we are predicting an increase in manatee deaths of 0.1177. If you come back up to look at the table, you see that the manatee deaths are you know, below 100 when there's 982,000 boats registered. So every boat is not hitting a manatee. It's uh, less common. So that's why our rate here is less than 1. So every additional 1,000 boats contributes to 0.11 manatee deaths. So you could think about it every 10,000 um, additional boat registrations would be another manatee death if you want to think about it that way. And you might be familiar with interpreting the slope as a rate of change. Um, you can think about it as the y variable change uh, per or over the x variable change. In algebra class we often write this as change in y or change in x where these triangles represent the change symbol, delta, um, is a Greek letter here, and it's used in chemistry for change in temperature or in math class for change in y and change in x in the graph. And then uh, the slope formula that we use is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This might be familiar from algebra class. Now what's different between our lines of best fit in algebra class is in algebra class, you would have a perfectly straight linear relationship, and so you'd be able to pick any two points and find a slope between them. In our line of best fit here, the slope goes through the middle of the data points. It's not uh, necessarily crossing through any of the data points. Uh, for the boats and manatees, we see the line of best fit goes through a few of these data points, but it would be very difficult to try to find the line of best fit by hand. You'd have to calculate the measurements for each of these data points, um, and it would take a while for 21 da data points, or 33 data points, however much we have here. So StatCrunch is quickly calculating, you know, the sample mean for the y values and then measuring each um, point's 
distance from the sample mean for the y values, the manatee deaths, and the x distance of each point from the sample mean of the boat registrations. And then using those values to find this line of best fit, it's the best fit through the middle of the data. So we can't pick two points in a linear regression and just find the slope between because the line of best fit kind of has to go through the middle here as best as it can. So we rely on StatCrunch to do that for us. Linear models can be very useful to approximate the relationship between two variables, but the models can have real limitations. Typically, linear regression models only correctly model relationships for limited x values. Consider the vertical intercept, also known as the y-intercept, uh, which occurs when x equals 0. Does the vertical intercept value make sense as a realistic value for the boat to manatee relationship? Well, the line of best fit predicts the starting value of negative 36 manatee deaths, which doesn't make sense. So we would not use the equation to predict uh, for x equals 0 boats. If you look back at our stat crunch graph here, we see the x values where our line of best fit is making a prediction start around 447 uh, or 450 roughly on the graph and go up to around 1,000 uh, 1, 000 boat registrations. So that would actually be a million boat registrations at the end of our x axis here. So we would not use our line of best fit to try to predict something you know much much less than 400 boats or much much more than say 1,500,000 boats or so. Uh, our line of best fit is reliable near the x values that we've used to make a prediction but when you go uh, down to zero or to really high values the line of best fit isn't going to be reliable in those places. So is there a strong correlation between the number of boats and the number of manatee deaths? How do you know? All right, well, we know if the correlation, the R value, is 0.70 or higher, we say there is a very strong correlation. So here, since the correlation value is 0.9403, we can definitely classify this relationship as a very strong correlation. All right, do you suspect there is causation between the number of boats and the number of manatee deaths? Can we prove for certain that this causation exists? Explain. All right, we cannot prove for certain there is a cause and effect relationship without conducting an experiment. Such an experiment would not be ethical or possible, right? You certainly couldn't tell people in Florida we're going to change the boat registrations allowed from year to year um, because we're conducting an experiment, and you certainly wouldn't want to do that to manatees. Um, we can only say that we suspect that boats cause manatee deaths and that we have evidence of a strong correlation. So now we want to use a regression line to extrapolate. Uh, to extrapolate is to make a prediction outside of the range of x values that we were given. So we're going to go a little bit higher uh, to extrapolate the number of manatee deaths there would be if there were 1,500,000 boats registered in Florida. So we're going to assume that this is, you know, just a little bit higher than the values in our graph so that this is a reasonable range to make predictions. So here, x is the thousands of votes. Uh, so we have to take 1,500,000 and convert that to thousands. Um, so 1,500,000 divided by 1,000 is 1,500,000 votes um, because we have to take out at least 1,000 of those. So when we think about that, um, you can think about the idea that a million is a thousand thousands, so one million five hundred thousand is fifteen hundred thousands of boats. So in our line of best fit down here, for the input or the x value, we are putting in the fifteen hundred or one thousand five hundred, and so our first calculation is going to be to multiply the slope times uh, one thousand five hundred, and then add that to the negative initial value we have here. And so that works out to be 140.25542 manatee deaths. Uh, when we're making our prediction, we'll just give the whole number of values since we wouldn't have partial manatee deaths. So our prediction, or our extrapolation, since we're predicting outside the range of x values, is to say if there are 1,500,000 boats registered in Florida, 
we predict 140 manatee deaths are expected. So scientists uh, or people concerned about manatees would use this data to try to help um, curb or limit the number of manatees affected, uh, and potentially they would limit the number of boat registrations if they were concerned about manatees being endangered. So what we've seen in this example is how we can use lines of best fit to make predictions and extrapolations for data points slightly outside our data set.